Hey guys, prepare yourself for another episode of Talking Through the Media. This is your home for entertainment news and reviews by fans for fans. I'm your host, Chris Fagan, and joining me, as usual, on a Thursday is Joy Fagan. Hey, babe, how you doing? She was very curious if we were talking about the Fantastic Four, and we are. And also joining us to help us talk about the Fantastic Four, virtually, virtually, I was trying to figure out how to say that, virtually, <laughs> Lana Marie. Hey, what's going on? Welcome hey. back. From cyberspace. Welcome back from cyberspace. Let's do a quick uh, sound check. All right, can you can you hear me? Are we okay over there? Yes. Okay. Make sure your sound is, is good. Okay. We have to do a quick sound uh, test to make sure that uh, I won't be I can't get sued by uh, Lana. Last time she said the volume was too <laughs> low, and I was to be docked five hundred dollars. So wow. I'm make sure that uh, that doesn't happen again, guys. Like I said, this is the show where we talk about the latest in entertainment news. We pretty much only got a few topics to talk about. Uh, today, uh, some last-minute stuff that, that came in in regards to the Fantastic Four uh, updates. Uh, I'm going to do a review with my wife. Uh, we saw any Anyone But You on Netflix. I'm going to give my uh, thoughts on that, her, her thoughts on that. Any excuse to talk about Sydney Sweeney, don't worry about it. It's just my thing. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, me and Lana will discuss the latest episode of X-Men 97. So guys, share your thoughts on any of those topics uh, that, that we have coming up. Share your thoughts on uh, this main topic that we're about to talk about. The first topic of the night. Babe, what do we got going on on a Thursday? Um, we have the Fantastic Four. Yeah. I didn't send you, did I not send you the, did I not print out the whole thing? Well, you did, but then you said something about it changed. Or? No, no, it, 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 that, that's, that, that's, that's, that's right. still okay. the same, yeah. Well, <laughs> John Malkovich joins the Fantastic Four. This is from Deadline, Malkovich has been cast in the Fantastic Four. As of now, the actor's role has not yet been revealed, so fans will have to speculate whether he's playing a hero or a villain. The cast so far in Julia Garner will play Shala Ball, a female version of Silver Surfer, while the starring cast includes Pedro Pascal as Reed Richards, a.k.a. Mr. Fantastic, Vanessa Kirby as Sue Storm, a.k.a. Invisible Woman, Iban Moss Bakrak as Ben Grimm, a.k.a. The Thing, and Joseph Quinn as Johnny Storm, a a.k.a. Human Torch. This MCU film is set to release in theaters in 2025. That was the original uh, news uh, that came up. We're going to talk about the, the other news that came up after that. So, John Malkovich finally joins a, a Marvel movie. And I speculated that he was probably going to play. I was like, what if he's Galactus? And then like, nope, that's not what's happening. Uh, that, that role has been filled. But before we get into that, Lana, I'll start with you. Lana, what do you think about this news about John Malkovich? Are you excited about, about this uh, casting? What do you think about John Malkovich joining the Fantastic Four? I think that's pretty awesome because, I mean, he's a really powerful actor. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last film I remember watching was Warm Bodies, where he played the dad. Oh, like yeah. The zombie <laughs> film. I love that movie. And I don't know, everything I've seen of him, it's like, I feel like whatever it is, you'll like it. Right. <laughs> The cool thing about John Malkovich's casting is that he was originally supposed to play the Vulture in the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man universe. If they were going to do a Spider-Man 4 with Tobey Maguire, he was supposed to be the Vulture. They, they didn't go that way. They, re, they rebooted, and then Andrew Garfield took over. They went to the Lizard, and then, uh, and then Rhino and Goblin and everything. And then when they rebooted it again, we finally got the Vulture with Michael Keaton. So we never yeah. got that vulture with Michael uh, with uh, John Malkovich that we were supposed to get. So I'm wondering. I know he's not the vulture. Okay, Michael Keaton is the vulture technically for the MCU, but I can't call it. I if I was to guess, I would I would assume that he's probably an agent or something like that. Maybe he's not even maybe not a villain or maybe he's 
just an agent or something, maybe not not necessarily with Shield, but I could see him playing something like a, um, some friend of the of the Fantastic Four, maybe somebody from the past who knew them uh, in, uh, before they got their powers, and then uh, when they get brought into the MCU in the current timeline, uh, remembers them from when you know from way back. I don't know, or maybe or maybe he's a villain. I don't know, but yeah, I could be a villain too. <laughs> he could probably be a villain, but if if you were to guess. If you since if you know anything about like the Fantastic Four villains or anything like that, do you have any speculations of who John Malkovich could play, or what would, would you? Is there a character that you would like to see him as? Yeah, that, that requires some some more thought. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know much about the Fantastic Four villains uh, uh, either. So anybody's guess is good is my you guys in the live chat. You guys are, are join us now. If you have any thoughts on that, babe, do you have any, any thoughts on uh, John Malkovich from any past movies or, I mean, or I this love current him. casting? He's great, but I know zero about the fantastic four. So yeah. I can't really tell you who I think. Jessica Alba, you don't play <laughs> Jessica Alba's dad. You don't think so? <laughs> it's not so. the same universe, <laughs> um, but he, he's great. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I mean, whatever they have chosen him for, he'll be fantastic. No, uh -huh, I see what you did there. Uh -huh, yeah, I, I see what you did there. Uh, you guys are in the live chat. If you guys are having any news or any, because uh, this just hit. Like I said, we were, I was, this was going to be the main topic. Who could John Malkovich be playing in the MCU? Would you rather see him as a hero or a villain? Or does it matter? Or could he just be some background character? Just, you know, hey, uh, you know, have a package here for Tony Stank like that. Like, uh, could he be the new Stan Lee pop-ins or something like that wouldn't that be funny if he was the new stan lee pop-ins you're not going to do that but that would that would be interesting if you guys have any speculations or, or if you are hearing any news any developing news about who john malkovich could be let us know in the chat if, or if you have any uh guesses or any fan wishes a wish list put it in the chat and i'll pop them up here on the uh on the on the the chat box here and uh, show your uh, thoughts on that. So beyond that, yeah, there was a there was new development that that came up after the fact, and I had to hurry up and amend the main topic because, like I said, I assumed that he could probably play a character like a uh, be Galactus. Maybe he was going to be the voice of Galactus, but no. It, that turned out, that was debunked while I was in the middle uh, of the show. Let me get this cat out the way <laughs> as I try to read. Because he was literally blocking what I was about to read uh, here. So fans uh, will speculate on whether or not John Malkovich will play a hero or villain. So the person that has been cast as Galactus has been named as Ralph uh, Innocent. The British actor whose three-decade career ranges from... Harry Potter movies to recent horror prequels, The First Omen, has landed the, the plum part of Galactus, a cosmic entity who consumes planets for to sustain his life force. So, I remember, I've seen this actor and I remember seeing him in The Witch. That was one of the first Anna Taylor-Joy movies. Uh, that I saw before I knew who Anna, uh, before I knew Anna Taylor Joy was going to become as big as she is today. That was a real freaky horror movie that that she was in, and he I believe he played her, fa her father. If I'm not remembering that incorrectly, I don't remember him in Harry Potter. I can't. I had to go. I'm gonna have to go back to IMDb to because I he seems like he's one of these actors where I've seen him in a whole bunch of stuff, but I can't remember what I've seen him in. So if I've seen the Harry Potter movies, but I don't remember what character he played. And you guys can help me out in the uh the chat but uh joy do you have any recollection of of who uh of ralph in, in uh innocent no, i'm googling innocent. you're google no, oh you're googling. I have no <laughs> she's googling as we speak what about what about you uh lana do you have any recollection of uh, what other uh movies have you seen? are you googling too is everybody I'm googling gonna have to google i'm gonna have to <laughs> okay i have because i haven't seen the first omen and like i said three decades like i said we've seen him in movies but yeah. I've seen Harry Potter, but I can't remember what character he played. I don't know, guys in the chat. Because he was in Guardians of the Galaxy. As uh, what? He uh, was. You said he. Was, you said he was. Ready Player One. I've seen that movie. I've seen that movie too. Love that movie. Star Wars: The Last Jedi. 
So, okay, so we've seen him in everything. Look, guys, I have Fair the enough. worst memory when it comes to actors and stuff like that. So, mostly, if we, if maybe we've only mo mostly seen, uh, heard, of, heard his voice or anything. Let's go, let's go to the chat. Um, let's see what, because we got, because, because uh, our, our legend uh, in, the, in the chat room is, is lighting it up. So I'm assuming that I'm, I, I overlooked something or I missed something. Let me see if I can pull you up here. There we go. Uh, chat, real time. Let's, let's go. Let's go here. Let's see. How do you, I am butthurt. What are you butthurt about? What are you <laughs> that he doesn't get to see Char Charler Charlerine, the new Mad Max. I, I don't know if that how the new Mad Max series. Oh, okay. All right. My, I'm, uh, my butt hurts how I don't get to see uh, Charlie in the new Mad Max series. But uh, I rock with uh, Blade and Jubilee. Oh, I guess what well, we talk. Are we? I guess what well, we talking about X Men on, on that one. Uh, he, he can be Huti Kala. Oh, okay. Well, now uh, the, on the question of who John Malkovich could play, he could. He can be Huti Kala. Uh, Kala uh, during Planet Hulk and beat the brakes out of. Scar. I'm, I'm assuming that, that that was when I asked who John Malkovich uh, could play. But I've I assumed that John Malkovich was going to be Galactus, but then uh, this this gentleman being uh, cast, Ralph, and, and I, from what I can tell, no one seems to have a problem with it. So I'm going to have to refresh myself on like I guess his voice. Because obviously that's what it's going to come uh, come down to. I'm wondering if they're going to model him the way they did with Thanos and have him have Galactus be in human form or, or humanoid form, or if it's just going to be his voice. Says that he is known for his very distinctive deep voice. Yeah, no. that's what I was say. I'm finding a lot of characters for voice roles. And it's yeah. Like yeah, he's voiced many characters in lots of video games as well. Okay. Okay, so so I mean, so that really helped me out, but yeah. still, apparently he has a very deep voice of some sorts. Yeah, so I guess so. I guess he, maybe he's got that 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 voice, that chocolate rain uh, voice, chocolate <laughs> rain. I don't know. I guess that's hey, if you like it, I love it. Okay, I mean, so far everybody's excited about it. I'm gonna have to go on the IMDb and refresh myself on what this guy sounds like. Is he a panty dropper? I guess that's what's going on here. I guess that's what's happening here. If you like it, I love it. Guys, let us know in the chat what you guys think about Ralph in uh Inman as Galactus. Everybody seems to love it so far. Uh I haven't I have no no complaints. People are saying perfect uh cast for him to play Galactus. Guys, let 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 us know your thoughts in the comments below and let's keep talking about that. Uh, let's move on real fast uh, to the next uh, topic. What did I have uh, uh, coming up next? X-Men 97. Yeah. X-Men, uh-oh, okay. Let's, all right. Season one, episode nine, Tolerance is Extinction, part two. That's a, I know, that's a mouthful of a, of a. You uh, got their Magneto villain, Xavier Returns. Oh, no, I mean, that's, those, are, those are our notes, all right there. Okay. So, real fast. Let's talk about the latest episode. There was a lot that happened, and, and this wasn't the, yeah. even the, the this felt like a season or series, or I mean a season finale. But this was this is the episode before the yeah, last episode you. of the season. What did you think about this this episode? Tolerance is extinction part two, Lana. Oh my God. <laughs> Where do I start? Yeah, really. Um... You go ahead. I'm gonna. I gotta fix your uh, camera while while you talk. But go ahead. I got you. It's just extremely unexpected. Like every episode so far. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, I'll say first. I I love the relationship between Jean and Storm. I was like, just about to ask you about that. Yeah. What What did you like? Th the whole sister best friend thing. I I love it. Um, it's also very fresh. You know, like you you don't see that portrayed so much. And I'm glad that they're including something that is, I guess, a positive, mm -hmm. especially with all the stuff going on in there. And they have this, they showing this bond, you know, like this, matter uh, what. I like that, that line that they said before they went to fight, uh, because, because uh, Storm is a, 
she what controls the weather mind? and Jean controls uh, things with, she's a telepath, she controls things with her mind. But it, it was something about um, they can, they will have to mind, they, they will have to mind, mind your weather mind your and weather. then. And then the other one said, though, then they're going to have to your weather mind. your mind or something like that. I was like, I see. I see what you're doing there. That's, yeah, that's, that's cute. But no, go ahead. What would you? <laughs> yeah. The, um, sorry, my, my brain went. Well, we got, well I, have, I have some notes on there, babe. You said, There's okay, so <laughs> the, notes, the notes for X-Men. Let's start off with um, Magneto. What did you think about the fact that Magneto is now back in his classic villain role? of for the series i mean from like it looks like he tried to you know be the good guy but it didn't quite work out everything kind of went another direction and i kind of don't blame him so so you're all, you're on team magneto was right sort of yeah <laughs> the uh, the 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 sad thing about it was that yeah you're right he really did try and like i thought it was gonna be like a trick like he had something up his sleeve the whole time like yeah. old magneto stuff <laughs> and i was like no he's actually serious because he's um, seen he's seen it so many times before he's seen he's he's seen hu uh, uh, humanity give be given un un unlimited chances and opportunities to be right and be, be uh, to be decent and they just go back to just being racist and assholes yeah. and stuff that's like like the he, metaphor he saw it as human like yeah. humankind and he saw it as mutant kind yeah he saw it, yeah he saw it during the ho uh, the holocaust he saw it and then he, and then he's seeing it as an adult uh repeat uh, history repeating itself and so it's that uh that uh has always been one of the best um parts of the of the uh, these x-men stories uh with magneto he's he's my, one of my favorite villains of all time so i can't wait until they incorporate him into the mcu and see what they're gonna how they're gonna handle that um rogue what do you think what did you think about rogues hey what's going on brianna how you doing i see you in the chat what do you what did you think about rogue's little speech when she joined magneto and how she just clapped back at everybody uh on the way to joining magneto uh saying stuff like um uh, that, that the professor, you know, you know, failed and and and, and abandoned and storm uh, storm wasn't uh, didn't see the last couple of weeks because her ass was uh, you know she had no powers and she she really just dug at everybody. Do you think that was fair? Did you think what do you think about Rogue getting all that off her chest? So you think she's still grieving? I think she is still grieving. I mean, she's been through a lot <laughs> this season. Yeah. Um, and. I, I don't know. I'm sort of on her side too. So, so you're, yeah, you're all the way team. Uh, you're all the way team Magneto. And so if you were in that crowd right there, you'd probably join Magneto too, right? It's like enough is enough. Yeah, um, yeah. We tried it your way. Man. Yeah, we yeah, we tried <laughs> we tried it your way. Let's get let's kick them all out. One well, in the last. I think one of the last things I I liked about it, about this episode. It made I don't know what went down between the former showrunner that was just recently fired. And I'm glad that he got season two out of the, out of the way before he was let go. So season, if so season two shouldn't really lose a step. Uh, but I'm now to the point where it's like, dude, whatever happened, unless, unless we're talking espionage, unless he, unless he tried to like steal from the, the Disney plus, petty cash uh, account or something like that. I don't know anything short from that I feel like they need to give him his job back because I feel like next season they're gonna no matter if any any time that there's a a weak episode people are gonna think it's because they fired um th that writer, gentleman that was uh, that was that was let go yeah. recently I'm so I'm now I'm worried about season two but lab before we move on uh off of this episode Wolverine Finally, oh, that man. that thing, that classic thing that happened in the comic books, where Magneto <laughs> finally rips into Wolverine and takes all that metal out and 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 uh, within a, uh, an inch of his life. Did you expect that to happen, or were you like me? I'm surprised it hasn't happened all uh, sooner. What well, I'm I'm surprised that something hasn't happened like that. But after he stabbed him. I was like, oh no, don't do that. Like, cause 
y'all are doing the death thing right now where yeah. y'all are actually trying to kill each other he's gonna do something even more horrible to you right and, I was like, and that's exactly what happened like he just that and i was like holy crap I, I wasn't expecting them to actually do it though even though it's like what would be the next thing you know Ex like, exactly after he stabs him like he's not gonna not like just let him live he he's already said like this is a war now right i'm thinking i'm thinking we just saw two things because I, I recently learned something when i went down a TikTok rabbit hole i learned that there was an episode in a in a comic book where Magneto's heart was either stabbed or even like I don't know a hole was punched in his chest and where he had no heart, but he he was able to use his powers his magnet powers to force his blood to keep pumping, even yeah. though he had no heart or way ability to do it. He was able to will his body to keep living with using his powers. That's how powerful uh, full he is, and I'm wondering if that's what we saw. Did we see Wolverine stab him through the heart and Mag magneto had to use his powers to keep himself from, from dying and simultaneously retaliate against wolverine and do and do that classic pull the animani uh antimanium out of uh, his body because throughout so I'm, I'm just curious about that but but then that made me think why didn't we ever see that in any of the old x-men movies and i think you helped me figure that out it's because we never saw Wolverine ever get that close to Magneto. Yeah. Magneto was always able to feel when Wolverine's metal got close to him, so he was always able to keep him at bay. But in this moment, Wolverine, just like you said, he got him. He st actually stabbed Magneto with, with metal. And I think that pissed Magneto off so much <laughs> that metal was able to pierce his skin. The master yeah. of magnetism. He was like, yo, yeah, no, I'm going to have to do something so girl, do you I, think that do you think that's the reason why we've never seen it happen before and like in the movies or any other other cartoons because Wolverine has never been able to get that close? Do you think what do you think about that theory? I I think that it could have happened at any time, but I think there was something that was keeping um like Magneto like mentally like whatever the relationship with Xavier, there's something that was always there and he finally let go of it. Yeah. So it it could have happened at any time. I mean, just, yeah. I mean that. What was that other line? Something that Magneto said. There's something I've been wanting to say. Two words that I've been wanting to say to you for <laughs> years. And yeah. when they, when he said that, I literally was like, I thought about the WWE. I was thinking about two. I got two words for you. I thought he was gonna say, <laughs> su I was gonna say, suck it. What you gonna what? <laughs> suck it? Are you gonna say suck it? And then he just said, no, shut up. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, oh, okay. It's Disney. I, I did see, like, there's an article going around um, that fans are talking about, like, they believe they're trying to kill everybody off to make room for new characters. They, they better not. They better not do that, that Transformers the movie bull crap because <laughs> that's exactly what they did back in the 80s. When the Transformers movie started, like the first five minutes, all your favorite Transformers were killed in the first five minutes of the movie to make way to make because we have new toys. No, I, I think they're getting rid of all these major characters. And then at the end of the season or, or at the end of maybe season two, there's, there's going to be some kind of a time jump and reset. I think Gambit's coming back. I think everybody that's been even that are dead, unless, they're going to come back with some kind of a time, <laughs> a time thing or something. Like Bishop is going to go back and stop it all from happening or something like that. That's what I think is going to happen. What about you? So, so there's also like the theory, like for like I'm still mad about Gambit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like Gambit coming for back me. as death, for me. or like all these other ideas of I guess the characters being changed or upgraded or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, I always thought like the moment we saw cable like oh okay everything's okay because everything will be reversed right but, but it hasn't happened comment, yet. he made that comment and it's like oh no and there's also like the other part where fans are talking about the the guy in the background of all the episodes is he called like watch the, watch the, the watcher? watcher yeah 
and the whole what if I, I, I only saw him on episode one I haven't seen him in anything else you think he's still has he been in every episode I don't know about every but I've seen more than one okay I, uh, but yeah I think some time thing is gonna happen and we're gonna and it's gonna get reset but overall what do you uh, what did you you, you love the this episode what did you think about this was this your favorite out of all of it or is this what does it rank with you top three <laughs> it's it's not gonna be my favorite. <laughs> I, I was more like, I was angry. Like I did, like I left it just feeling so just wrong. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Um, I mean, it got, but it got an emotional. I love the series. Yeah. I love the series though. Well, I, I'm, I'm loving it too. I can't wait to get, uh, get more uh, out of it. Um, but guys, let us know what you think about the X-Men 97. What are your, what are your theories? What do you think is going to happen? in the in the, the last episode uh what is it tolerance is extinction part three i'm i'm curious and what's gonna go down on that and we'll get into your thoughts uh, a little bit uh, after the show but before we uh end it off i'm going to let's do a quick review i'm going to talk with uh joe we we saw we saw another uh series you don't you didn't watch the x-men with me but we saw um a movie called any Anyone but you with Tiffany. Uh, sweet, oh, I switched to the wrong camera. Uh, we, with Tiffany. Tiffany. Tiffany Sweeney. I'm supposed to say Tiffany Sweeney. Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> we saw, you made up a new person. Yeah. <laughs> who, who am I thinking about? Tiffany Haddish and Sydney Sweeney. I don't know. But we saw it on Netflix, and was, I mean, I heard we I heard good things about it. I heard that it was doing good in the theaters, but for some reason, I didn't want to go to the movie. That we I think we might have planned to go see it in the theaters, and then something happened. We never got around to seeing it, so we watched it on Netflix. But uh, I I really did enjoy it. I thought it was a good movie. So real fast, what what was your quick thoughts uh, on on? I mean, it's super. I so if you're war- if you're expecting something different than any other rom-com, rom-com type movie, like a different outcome, yeah. you're not going to get it because it it's typical. It follows the the normal plot lines. <laughs> but in the middle, getting um, there, they they made some a few trope changes. They didn't stick to all the tropes. They stick to a lot of them, but there was but, some that they did. I'll give it. I that. mean, I didn't, it didn't bother me. Yeah. I just. If you're going into it expecting to see something totally different, yeah. you know, it's a rom-com and it does what rom-coms do. Yeah. But it was super cute. Um, so I, cute. I, I had a lot of laughs. Yeah. I mean, I think the Australian surfer dude. Was the funniest part? It was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I thought I that. what his name. What, yeah. I'm calling him, but. Mm. <laughs> I um, thought that the um, the that they the tropes that they did break were like things like for you to like the person that you're meant to be with, you gotta hate the the boyfriend or the girlfriend that they're with. They have to be a jerk. They 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 did it. I mean, they they did it yeah. with with one of the characters. Like like you rooted for Sydney Sweeney's character because the other girl on the other side that that the 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 guy that she was meant to be with could be the the person that he could choose. She was a total jerk. But on Sydney Sweeney's side, the guy that everybody were expecting her to get with her ex-boyfriend, he wasn't a jerk at all. He was a nice guy. So they like like it was it was situations where they broke rom com norms that we've seen over the years, and in, in a lot of ways they they kept them all uh, you know they kept them all intact. the The cast was was funny. I can I, mean, I can see Dermot why Dermot Mulroney is great as always. He's, which, which one? Uh, Sydney Sweeney's dad. Yeah, the, I mean he's been he's been around forever, and he's he's good. The uh, and the and the guy who uh, who played Dollar, I think his name was uh, on that show Dave that I watched. I, I, you know, I, I love. I can't remember if his name was Dollar or not, but that the uh, the the friend of the family who was I don't know. I can't remember his name anyway. Overall, it was a it was a good time. It was a good movie. I can see why this movie did so well. It worked very well because it was rated R. Being rated R really helped. The fact that they didn't hold back with the jokes and the and the and some of the uh, raunchy humor, it it helped. If this was rated PG thirteen, this probably wouldn't have worked as well for me. But it being an R rated movie it made it a lot funnier, and and uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, but overall, it was just a very well done uh, little rom com. And so far, it's it is the best movie she's done. I mean, I've seen I've seen more of her movies than you have, 
But out of all the movies that, that she's got out right now, that's the, the best one. Way, way above Madam Web. Way, <laughs> way. But that's going to forever be her worst uh, movie. But this is, this is her, her best movie so far. And I liked the horror movie that she just did with, and when she's playing the nun. That movie was good, but, and it's hard to compare the two, but this, this movie, I can see why this movie was such a financial success and such a hit. So if you got time to watch it on Netflix, go, go out there, go, go check it out. All right. That was, I just wanted to get that out the way because I always promise to do entertainment news and reviews. So real fast, before we call it a night, I wanted to go, is, are there any of the, uh, the comments that were coming in? I see uh, people talking in the live chat. Answering any of our questions about about X Men or I'll anything, Garuda Legends made a lot of comments about your X Men. But about the X Men uh, conversation, let's well, let's highlight them. Let's see what she will be shocked to see how Magneto is still alive, losing his actual heart. Who she being rogue maybe right. rogue? What do you? It said, she will be shocked to see how Magneto is still alive, losing his actual heart. I'm assuming that you mean. Rogue will be shocked. I'm assuming that's what you think. You think that's what he, uh, what they mean, Lana? Rogue would be Probably. shocked. Probably. Magneto did survive more than Wolverine, and Magneto did hold a punch to the heart with a hole. A punch to the heart with a hole. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I remember hearing about that in uh, that that happened in the comic book that that he was able to survive, not even having a heart, <laughs> because because he's so powerful, he can make his blood. But I mean, but that, that that writing doesn't make sense to me that Magneto can do that because what I can I can understand you're moving the blood around with uh, with uh, with uh, uh, you know with your powers, but you still need your heart to make new blood. You can't just sustain yourself like that. That don't make no sense. Your heart needs to be there so you can make new blood. You can't just have old blood running up and down your veins. It's going <laughs> to get nasty. <laughs> but I mean, but they they wanted to make that happen in the. Uh, and I'm I'm willing I'm I bet that Wolverine stabbed his heart but didn't like destroy it. I'm pretty sure it could he'll be able to heal himself. But but that whole thing about him's heart being punched out of his chest that happened in the comic book, I don't think Disney Plus would have even approved that. I mean, <laughs> I was surprised to even see Wolverine get those claws in there, but I mean, hey, that was that was a shock uh to me. Return to Mush. <laughs> Return, you said to who? Turned to mush. Like when took out all the metal out of the, t uh, out of Wolverine. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. I wasn't that expecting was... that scene. I was like, holy crap. Yeah, it was, it was, it was brutal. Uh, but yeah, overall, yeah, Wolverine, uh, getting that, getting that stab in and then, and then, uh, Magneto. You know, retaliating. I, I, that's going to be a mess. I can't wait to see uh, how they're going to talk about. I bet you, I bet you, all of the next episode, Wolverine's gonna, not even going to be in it. He's just going to be in pain and in the hospital the whole time, and we're not going to see Wolverine in action again until next season. That's what I'm assuming. Um, but before, I think there was something that I forgot to do before, uh, like the last time that we uh, collaborated. I forgot to give you your moment uh, real, uh, real quick when when we were talking about your your cosplay, uh, Lana. I forgot we we did your top five of your, of your favorite cosplay, but we forgot to mention the the other cosplay, the horror cosplays that that you that you've done that you've done. Now you can't. I don't think you can see what I have up on screen. Let's see if I can if I can share that with you. Here we go. What do you see? I this see right it. here. Yes, I see it. Any, what? What was this? This is uh, this is a, uh, a cosplay that I meant to show last time. What can you tell us about about this one? Well, from one of my favorite movies, like as a kid and even as an adult, um, Legend. From uh, I mean, that's what it's called, Legend. There's so many movies with the name Legend now. Tom um, Tom Cruise Legend. Yeah. Well, I, I call it Tim Curry legend because he was darkness, like, because that's what I remember the most is the mm -hmm. unicorn and um, the demon. <laughs> Wasn't that the one where the little kid, the little guy was like, kill her, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the little, uh, 
elf or dwarf um because they had all the like fantasy creatures in there because it's all about you know the unicorns the elves the dwarfs and like yin and yang yeah you you can't have darkness without you know the light and you can't have light without darkness you have to have both like there's actually words throughout the movie where it really sticks with you because it's there's a lot of truth to it yeah and it's said in such i don't know just a powerful way if you really listen to it but the character i chose was um darkness well female version of darkness from legend which was played by tim curry which is one of my favorite actors or, may, or maybe or maybe skills <laughs> or maybe if in another universe if jack didn't succeed and he did marry his bride maybe you're playing their daughter <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> but no that's i forgot to uh the the show one of those uh last time and so i want to make sure we, that because you, you got you have a lot of and guys check out Check out Lana Marie. Is it Lana Marie Live dot com? Is that is, is that the full uh, the full website? Lana Marie Live dot com. La, Lana Marie Live dot com. Let, let's do a do a, a quick plug on it again. Let's tell tell them about that uh, about where they can find your cosplay. You can find pretty much all my costumes, my acting on Lana Marie Live or Lana Marie Live on any social media. My mm -hmm. name everywhere. <laughs> so follow, yep. So follow uh, Lana Marie on all the socials. Let uh, let her know that uh, she should make a triumphant return back to Comic Palooza. She's not going to be there. You're not. You're still not going to be there this year, right? No. Maybe well, next year. Maybe next year. <laughs> yeah. But when, uh, but yeah, you can check out all of her cosplay uh, work uh, on Lana Marie Live dot com. All right. I think that was uh, it, uh, unless we have do we have any more any questions, comments, or anything mm -hmm. like that. I know for a fact that Mag one, one last Magneto uh, fact here. I know for a fact that Magneto will uh, protect me if I was a mutant. <laughs> so he's like team, well, obviously Team Magneto all the way between uh, to, between uh, uh, me, uh, uh, Gar Garuda Legends, and uh, Lana. Everybody's Team Magneto. So yeah. <laughs> Professor X really uh, f the f that all up, so he's losing he's losing support left and right. But uh, guys, uh, that, what was uh, what was that? It took too long to, to come back. To come back, yeah, he's, he, yeah. yeah, he messed it all up. Scott had a whole ba uh, baby, and he's like fifty, and the baby's like fifty years old now. <laughs> <laughs> he took forever to get back. Professor was fucking up. All right, guys, uh, that's the show. I appreciate you guys for joining us on another episode of as we were here talking through the medias, as we always do on Thursday. Like for this week and the weeks leading up to Cos uh, Comic Palooza, we're only going to have one show. So there won't be like a, an after dark on Fridays uh, until after uh, Comic Palooza. I'm only because now now is the time where it's it's down to those last few episodes. This is episode 297. Next week, 298 and 299, and then episode 300 will uh, be at, live at Comic Palooza. Guys, like I said, if you guys want to uh, check us out at Comic Palooza, come uh, watch us. If you're in the Houston area, if you're into cosplay, if you're into geek culture, if you're into uh, comic books, uh, just meeting celebrities uh, that have entertained us throughout the years, uh, Comic Palooza, they have it all. They have something for everybody out there. Go check us out there. We're going to say we're going to be live. I have a surprise cosplay that I'm going to reveal. I'm not ready to. T I'm not going to reveal it now. I'll I'll surprise you guys. Uh, like anybody who's been there before, you know what I've done. But you're not ready for what I'm about to bring you this uh -oh. uh, year. So it's about to be all the way after. I'll I'll let you know, uh, Lana, after when we go off the air. But I'm, but for everybody else, it's <laughs> got to be a surprise. All right, guys. Uh, that's the show. I want to thank my guest for helping me out, uh, Alana. Once again, I mean, you've already you've already given the plug, but one last time, if people want to reach out to you online, where can they do so? LanaMarieLive.com or on my socials, it's all Lana Marie Live. And Joy, if anybody wants to uh, reach out to you, maybe if they uh, do scrub hats or if they uh, just want to say hi, where can they do so? <laughs> My TikTok is Viola Fagan, and my Instagram is Scrub Hats and More by Joy. And for me, guys, for me, for me, for me if you me. want to reach out to me, you can reach out at Chris W. Fagan or at T3 Media Studios. And 
uh, there's going to be an up. There's there's some new things coming to the website. I I fifty percent done, and we're going to have more sponsors and things to talk about. And the, I, I'm pretty sure after Comic Palooza, we'll we'll have all that stuff up and running to, to show you guys. So thank everybody in the live chat. Uh, thank you, uh, Garuda Legends. Thanks, uh, Brianna, for joining us in the chat. And until next time, guys, have a good one. Peace. Thank you guys for watching our video. I really do appreciate it. Remember, you can support our show by becoming a member or a patron. So click the subscribe button. Don't forget to ring the bell for notifications so you'll never miss out on when we go live or post new content. Let's stay connected. Grow this community together. Like, subscribe, comment, and let's keep talking.